Hey there, and welcome to another Ask Me Anything session, where I'm answering all of your questions about the publishing industry and writing a better book. First, thank you so much to everyone who has been engaging in those comments. I'm seeing them. I'm excited to answer as many as I can. I have to give the requisite hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. If you are joining us for the first time, we would love to have you around as part of this community. Also, if you haven't already, go down into my description and grab my free story self-assessment. It's going to sign you up for my newsletter that's coming soon with exclusive tips and resources and give you a worksheet to help you revise your work in progress and identify its current strengths and weaknesses. So without further ado, let's dive into the questions we have today. First, I'm so happy that you've been finding the Ask Me Anything sessions helpful. I've really been enjoying them as well. I have a question about querying the film industry. I have my completed unpublished manuscript. In addition to engaging a traditional book publisher, I want to market my manuscript to the film industry. Does this happen through the literary agent? If not, do you have recommendations? This absolutely happens through the literary agent. So if your plan is to be traditionally published, you will, in the vast majority of cases, need a literary agent. And the literary agent, in addition to selling the book rights to publish the book in its English form, is going to look to sell the film rights as well. Typically simultaneously when they are selling the book rights or maybe slightly after. They're also going to look into foreign publishers and what we call sub rights, which means audiobook editions and large print editions, things like that. Your literary agent is going to cover all of that. That's what you're paying that 15% commission for. This kind of relates into the next question. Why do some books get audiobooks and why do some books never have an audiobook? Also, why a series like, say, a cozy mystery series that has seven books and six of them have audiobook versions, but the seventh does not and the book was published three years ago? How does a publisher decide a book is going to be an audio? I'm asking all these questions because as someone who is blind, audiobooks is how I enjoy books. And if I get a publishing deal, I want to know if I have a shot at getting my book an audiobook so it can be accessible to the blind community. Great question. As I alluded to in the last answer, your literary agent is going to try to sell the audiobook rights whenever they sell the print and ebook rights to your book. So this usually happens in one of two ways. Either the literary agent will retain the audiobook rights and then sell it to a specific audiobook publisher. There are a few big ones out there or they will sell the audiobook rights to the big five publishing house like Penguin Random House has an audio division and they might acquire the audiobook rights as part of the package deal that they get from the literary agent. It all depends on the negotiations and the bidding that is going on and what your agent thinks is going to make you the most money. I would say that the vast majority of books that go through the traditional publishing process do get an audio edition, if not through a separate audiobook publisher, then through their main publishing house. So it is odd that this one book in the series that you referenced doesn't have the audio edition. Not quite sure why that happened, because as you say, audiobooks make the books more accessible to more readers. And I certainly know I love listening to an audiobook when I'm walking this dog behind me. So I would say it is highly likely if you go the traditional publishing route that you will have an audio book as part of your deal. Here's another question. Can you please comment on genres and subgenres? I have written a traditional Western. When I look for agents accepting queries for Westerns, it is very discouraging. Can I possibly submit the book as an adventure, historical, family saga, or is it doomed because it's about cowboys? First, it is not doomed. No story is ever doomed from the start. There's always the potential to find your readership and find a publisher for your book. But you bring up a really important point, which is how niche do you need to get in your subgenre description when you are reaching out to literary agents? Now, there's no clear cut answer to this, but the way that I see literary agents talking about genre and the way that I understood it whenever I was working in the industry is that there are overarching fiction genres and then as you alluded to subgenres. Western in particular, I would consider a subgenre and most likely it would fall under historical fiction unless it is a contemporary Western, in which case you could label it as contemporary fiction. Another example of a subgenre is another one that you alluded to, which is family saga. This isn't necessarily one of the overarching genres that you would say find when you're going into a bookstore, but it is something that you can use to classify your book. However, it is unlikely you're going to find a bunch of literary agents listing that they want family saga specifically. So you would nestle that under the overarching genre, which might be contemporary fiction or historical fiction. 
I hope that helps clarify kind of the overarching genres and then you can narrow down and narrow down and narrow down as much as you want. But for the purposes of querying, go with that broader genre. And think of those like the different shelves that you would find at Barnes & Noble in the fiction section. Here's another question. I'm currently working on a contemporary rom-com. It should be ready for querying in a few months. I do have future plans of writing contemporary rom-coms, but next I would love to write a fantasy and try to get it published as well. Should I be looking for one agent who represents both genres or query agents who only represent contemporary novels and then later on look for a different agent to represent my fantasy projects whenever they are done? Thank you so much for all of your help. This is a great question because a lot of writers don't want to be pigeonholed into one specific genre. And there are so many examples of best-selling authors out there who dabble in different genres and you should never feel creatively limited to only only write in one genre. That said, as you have noted, agents have specific genre specialties that they work within, and that dictates the editors at the publishing houses that they have relationships with, because they typically have the best relationships with editors who acquire the same type of books that they like to represent and they just kind of have that same editorial vision and they meld really well. And that's why your agent is going to be able to find you a perfect editor match at the publishing house. All that being said, literary agents will also dabble in different genres frequently. For instance, many agents represent narrative nonfiction in addition to fiction. So I would say for your purposes, it would probably be ideal if you could find an agent who represents contemporary rom-coms and fantasy. So if you find any of those, yes, absolutely go ahead and query them. However, I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to keep your list a bit short because those genres are quite different. So in that case, what I would recommend is focusing on agents that represent contemporary rom-coms because that is the project you have ready to go right now. Once you sign with that agent, or in some cases before you even sign with an agent, you are going to discuss what your future writing plans are. And that's the point at which you can say, I am planning to do additional books in this genre. However, I also want to eventually write fantasy. And the agent can advise you at that point if they would potentially be interested in representing you on that project or if it would be better for you to find a different agent either at that point or at this point. What I will say is that if an agent has already gotten to the point of wanting to offer you representation, it's likely that they are very, very committed and invested in your writing, which is going to have similarities no matter what genre you are writing in. It is your voice, your style as the author, and it's likely that that is what the agent was interested in to begin with. So I would not be surprised at all if you got an agent who specializes in contemporary romance, but you write something that is fantasy and they still want to represent that, even if it's not their primary genre specialty. All right, we have time for one more question. How to write a perfect epilogue. Can I add a plot twist in the epilogue? My novel has a sad ending and this plot twist will make it even more sad. Kind of like prologues are a bit controversial. Epilogues are also a bit controversial. And my opinion and view of them is that if they work and they add to the story and they provide necessary resolution, then you should have one. But if you feel like you're forcing it or you're throwing the reader off into a different direction, which it sounds like you might if you have a plot twist in the epilogue, then it probably isn't necessary. The key at the end of the novel is to make sure that the reader feels some sense of resolution and satisfaction in that the strands of conflict that you have established throughout the book are addressed in some way. That doesn't necessarily mean you have a happy ending. In fact, some of the most powerful and emotionally impactful novels have sad endings. So don't feel like that is a problem at all or that you have to tie things up in a bow. Sometimes when authors create epilogues or especially if they go far into the future and they are showing how the characters lived happily ever after and had kids and had a house, then sometimes I feel like maybe they're trying a bit too hard to tie everything up in a bow and it's not really necessary. The reader just wants to feel settled, wants to feel like the questions the plot has posed are answered. Sometimes you do need to do that in an epilogue, such as if the action of the story ends kind of abruptly and at a really climactic moment, and you need to take a bit of a breather and then show the reader a scene that happens six months, a year, two years down the line. Typically an epilogue is useful when you have to have a bit of a break in time to show that final scene, but it is not always necessary. I hope you liked these questions today and found them helpful. As I mentioned, make sure to hit that like button to let me know that you found this video interesting and subscribe if you haven't already. 
Also download that free story self-assessment and let me know how it goes. Also make sure that you leave me any additional ask me anything questions in the comments here. That's the list that I use whenever I'm going through my queue. Thank you so much for watching and happy writing.